The presidency has denied reports that it has plans to amend the constitution regarding the two-term limit for presidents. Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garib Show, in a statement said such attempt was unconstitutional and will not happen under President Muhammad Buhari's watch. Joining me to discuss this, or rather still with me to discuss this, are my two guests. We have Martins Numba, he is a political analyst, thank you for staying, and of course Adan Jamanze, public relations uh, consultant, thank you very much uh, for okay. joining us. Okay, this is not the first time we are having this uh, conversation in this country. Uh, the first time was I mean, the reactions were unprintable to a certain degree. And now we have this. What do you make of government's swift response to just nip this entire argument in the bud? Um, timely, I guess. But um, the reality is there are questions to be asked. What, what are, are these questions? The, yes, what are the antecedents of this government with regard to things like restructuring? The APC as a party had that, um, you know, uh, dimension to their 2015 manifesto. I wasn't really interested in their 2019 because I didn't bother. What happened to that? It was abandoned. This president, after his third attempt, said he wouldn't make another attempt, but he came a fourth time. He's president now. Even at that, we heard that he was going to do one term. He's done a second term. Then again, you look at all of the things that are happening around him, the kind of people that he is associating with, people that take bullion vans to their homes. Mm -hmm. Then you talk about a person like uh, the pension thief, Mena, and the president said he wasn't aware, but we know the story. You look at the chief justice of Nigeria that was uh, unceremoniously removed, Onogen. Uh, at a point, it was even the vice president, Yemi Oshibajo, who said the president was unaware, but today we know the story. So the whole political scenario has been littered with one lie after another. So I'm going to be very specific about this matter. President Muhammadu Buhari, to my mind, has no choice but to remain in office. Why would you say that? Now, I will tell you this. Beyond his, 2023, yes, you mean? Yes, his cup is so full with a lot of untidy mess that if he leaves that seat, the kind of force that will come after him, he cannot withstand it. Now, let me give you an instance. Today, we know that the issue of affidavit certificate, it was a big lie. I'm not talking about what the judgment says, so I'm telling you the facts as they are. Let me tell you. There is something that was, <laughs> let me just digress a bit. Jesus said something which was, which is easier to say to this man, your sins are forgiven you or get up and walk. Now I ask you, which is easier? If I say to you that I have my certificates with a military board, which is easier? I go, go there as a commander in chief or I order that they bring this thing to me or I go and get lawyers to defend my affidavit. For goodness sake, the lies are too many. The president cannot afford to leave that seat. Well, the presidency is saying yeah, that we've they heard what they will not. This is Nigeria. I've given you instances, and I can still give you another hundred. Let, let's bring in Ada. <laughs> Let, let's hear your thought. I mean, he seems very strong in his position. Oh. Do you do you agree with no. this position? No. I don't agree with his position. I mean, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. True. Uh, but this is what I believe. Uh, during his campaign, pre. 2015, he made promises that are yet to be met. So you've had the first chance. This is your second chance. If you don't meet it, leave. There's no need because there's so the, the problems that we're currently facing right now, I don't think we've really, really faced this problem with other presidents. So you've done your bits. You've not fulfilled what you said. Was, anyway, like you said, we still have enough time. Let's give them that credit. But if the four, four years is up and he didn't fulfill his, he should go. There's nothing like third term. There's this thing about history. Um, we also had a scenario during Obasanjo's time when he didn't come out to um, actually debunk the rumors at yes. the time. Yes. He was silent 
Why was it right? Silent? It was towards the end that he now came out when the whole thing uh, hit. If I if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. now who started that? It was friends of the presidency. And we have a similar scenario now. These friends of the presidency, according to the statement issued by the presidency, mm -hmm. is advocating for a change in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to allow for a third term. I, I let, mean, me, let me clap how... for you. Let me clap for you. Very beautiful observation. Now, I tell you, I'm not cutting you, but I tell you something. How strong is a man? A man is as strong as the weakness of those who are supposed to challenge him. Where we are in Nigeria today, this is the weakest point from 1914. Quote me. This is the weakest point. The labor unions are weak. The judiciary is, <laughs> they are just vegetables as we speak. The civil society, maybe I could say they are compromised. Now I tell you something. At the NBA conference that just you know, passed, Michael Zekome, senior advocate of Nigeria, he said something about the removal of the former CJN. And what happened? In characteristic fashion, especially among Southern Nigeria, Femi Falano, senior advocate of Nigeria, he stood up to say, no, there is no judicial body, bench or bar, that will support corruption of any individual. But I beg to say that anybody listening to me now should take this message to Mr. Femi Falano. That statement was unfortunate. I tell you something, you protect the institution if at any price, even if you're going to destroy an individual, wait until the end of his tenure, which is why we have immunity, for instance, for people like the president and the governors. You have an arm of government, the judiciary. For me, it is the most critical aspect of a democracy. Why? Rule of law. Uh, I, I'm still now, getting your point. Now, my point is this. Where we are now, I said strong man and weak followership. Today in Nigeria, who is going to stand up to President Muhammad Ubura? Listen, the third term is as good as given. Unless the institutions begin to rise and assert themselves. The labor union is dead. Let me tell you why. They announced something about 30,000 uh, minimum wage. As it happened, in this studio, I told you it would be impossible to implement. You talk about employment oh, but, of uh, I think um, one governor, El Listen, Fine, there's another listen. bloody committee. Yes. Sorry to use that language. You see, these things are frustrating. <laughs> we see something white as it is, and we call it black. Today, Nigeria is too weak. Some of the people that had had the courage to withstand, for instance, a person like uh, General Obasanjo, a T.Y. Danjuma came out, an Atiku Abubaka came out, and a few other people came out to say, you know what, this thought term must die. But you know something? These men are old now. Okay, let, let me bring Ada in, and I want to do a little quote from the statement that was written by Shu. Uh, he said in that statement that Although there had been an attempt in the past to change the constitution uh, to allow for the incumbent president to stand for a third term, such attempt was wrong and unconstitutional and will not happen under the administration of uh, Buhari. Um, my question is, on a scale of 1 to 10, what is your level of confidence considering the reality of, you know, sometimes their disobedience to um, the rule of law, I mean, court orders, and, you know, some shenanigans on the side, what is the level of your confidence that this government will not renege or change its mind as to a third-term agenda? Confidence is very low. It's... <laughs> it's is very why? Low. Why? Why? I mean, is it because not? we've looked at so many, like there's so many scenarios. Like he talked about the CJ, and there's just so many scenarios to just sit down. And did we ever sit down and wonder that one day Nigeria is going to get to that point with what happened with the CJN? We never ever thought about it. So I'm wondering where this rumor started from first. I want to really, really know the root yeah, of the because, rumor, because you know, it's what very we heard important. Was a group, a social, it's on social media. That's the statement. It was, it's very the reason we're taking media. this conversation is because the presidency issued a statement debunking the rumor. After two days. Two days. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with how quick we are to react to information flow in Nigeria. This is a situation that when we saw in the Obasanjo era, we saw 
the damage and the, the good and the bad of what this information did to Nigerians, not even to the, not even to the legislative, to Nigerians as a whole. So yeah. at this point in time, this information, what is it? Like it's, again, I feel like it's also putting fear in certain, it's going to put fear in some Nigerians. You do realize that. Okay, you, you know what, let, let's, let's try. And you, you seem to have a real grasp of this. So I'm going to ask you, what does history tell us about such scenario? Uh, the government coming to the bong and group advocating for a change in the constitution. Let me tell you, it's not a difficult thing. I'm not interested in something. And a group of people are all over the place chit-chatting about this same thing. So it's What's the, the right thing day? they've done. The proper thing, get all of them arrested. It's as simple as that. No big deal. I'm not interested in this thing. Get, I gave you instances. Again, look at the kind of people you have in the National Assembly. No, no, I'm actually, I'm actually, um, you, you've, you've said this. Yes. What I'm looking at is, what does history, we've had this scenario before. That was yes, the first thing I said. So, what did we, what did history, what did we learn from that experience the, that we should history, not allow replay now? Listen, the history, even with a military government, we, we can all recall the Maradona scenario. I'll hand over in 1990. No, let's make it 91. Okay, we're bringing in new breed politicians. No, let us ban parties. We're establishing two um, political parties. At the end of the day, what happened? The election was annulled. At the end of the day, what happened? MK Abiola died. For goodness sake, we are familiar with this kind of uh, uh, talk, brick bad that has no meaning. I am sitting here. I'm not uh, saying it from behind a closet. I'm saying to you that it will be difficult very, very difficult for this president not to take that gamble because mm. all the institutions are vegetables as we speak. They are all very weak. The people that are tempted before looking at history, the institutions were strong, vibrant. Today, they are all very weak. And Even I was going then, to mention, some people will tell you that the institutions were still and not I also, strong. And I also wanted to mention one. the National Assembly. Look at, for instance, sorry, um, this man from South South, the Deputy Senate President, we know what happened in the Eighth Assembly. Today, see, if we want to build a country, if we want to build a society, if we're serious, we should not toy with all of these things that are happening now. It is so annoying, it is so frustrating. You understand? Today, nobody, which is why I'm saying, that the men who were like strong men, they are all old now, they are all aging. A number of them are closer to their grave. Who is going to stand in their stead? Is it Femi Shore, or what's his name now? That uh, with his revolution now, is in jail as we speak. So for goodness sake, Nigerians should rise up. And I gave you that instance of Falano deliberately, deliberately, you cannot, have a democracy and you say you continue to make men strong for goodness sake make the institution strong let's look at the this group that is advocating this the statement did not identify a particular group so we don't seem to know no, much about this group. as usual but there, are, there there is there if we don't know much about this group in the first instance why would a statement be really, issued yeah. and then on the second hand these groups People are saying that these groups are the kinds of group that give the country a really bad name. What should be the appropriate reaction? He suggested arresting and Arrest all of them. that. But beyond that, what should we do to people like this who say maybe the perfection of this administration is making, giving them added energy to ask for more? Why are they? Okay. We don't even know the group. <laughs> I'm even confused. We don't even know the group. And like he said, arrest them. But then again, when you arrest them, what are we arresting them for? They are asking for a okay, change you in the constitution. No, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm asking what are we arresting them for? Again, then in, again uh, my point is information. This information came from somewhere. Even if it is not the group, somebody injected that information to the group to share it to the public. So he said friends of the president, who are the friends of the president? And why are the friends of the president trying to instigate a, a situation? A because well. this is conversation that if our legislative, sorry to continue, if our legislative are actually, if they actually want to talk about something, this is something they should talk about. This is something they should talk about when they are not sleeping. 
Well, I'm told we have very limited time, so I'll just take your concluding thoughts. What is your um, take on this scenario? What is your advice to Nigerians and the government as regards this particular issue and the statement that has been presented? Well, um, at least um, we can say they came out to say something. Fair enough for them. But the reality, for some of us who sleep well, we rest enough, you know, we're not really worried about some of these things. We know that we've seen all of this play out before. The statement that was used to annul the June 12th election was not signed. It did not come on a letter head. So these things are usual. But if the government is serious, they should go after these people. Let us rest. So in this country, some people said uh, some other Nigerians should leave their part of the country. Nothing has happened. <laughs> Your conclusion thoughts? I'm, you see, I'm still speechless about this whole thing because I remember the Obasanjo era when this came up and I said no. This is this would be one of the worst things to happen to us. I think with this government, I think I, I would even consider maybe leaving Nigeria for them because it, I don't think it's going to work. Please don't, don't leave. If you leave, we will fix it. Going anywhere. I don't think it's going to work because Thank I'm you so much, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, for coming on the program. Pleasure, pleasure. I appreciate Thank your you. thoughts and your Thank contributions. You. Thank you so much for staying. We'll go on a short break for our plus package, and when we return, I'll give you my take. Stay with us. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tuka Buratai has commissioned the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command Staff Quarters in Giri, Abuja. General Buratai, who was represented by the Chief of Policy and Plant, Lieutenant General Lamidi Adeosun, said that the commissioning of the two-block building is part of efforts to cater for its staff, thus enabling them to effectively discharge their duties. We cannot rule out the fact that Welfare impacts positively on the productivity and the achievement of organizational goals. Generally, it has been one of my topmost priorities to improve the welfare conditions of troops in the Nigerian Army. In view of this, and in addition to my vision for the Nigerian Army, which is to have a professionally responsive Nigerian Army, in the discharge of its constitutional roles. We have made several efforts to tackle accommodation challenges in barracks across the nation. My decision to commission the staff accommodation today is to enable the cyber warriors to get accustomed to the serenity of the new environment they will be operating from pending the completion of the headquarters in a couple of weeks to come. I want to seize this opportunity to commend the officers and soldiers of the command and advise them not to relent in their efforts. I urge them to undo all the items provided in their living accommodation with utmost care. When the phrase Third term agenda comes up in Nigeria. The name of Basanjo splashes in our mind's eye. He clearly misjudged the mood of the country when his friends at the time became brash and in so doing, he exposed the ugly underbelly of ethnic and religious tension in a land for all to see. And just as it was then, we certainly do not want friends of President Muhammad Buhari prepping the stage for some unsolicited grand third term agenda. We must not forget the past. History exists to guide us, to help us avoid pitfalls of years past. The Buhari presidency, in my opinion, did well shutting this brash talk down. It was the right thing to do. And that's a wrap on our program tonight. It is always a pleasure to moderate the conversation here and a double pleasure knowing you are with us. Thank you for watching. Please share your thoughts on the program using our various social media handle at Plus TV Africa. Until next time, please be well. <laughs>